Today is uh, Tuesday, February the 9th, and this is what we covered for today. So we started off with a video. We are getting into a brand new objective um, 1.02. We're going to look at how our economy is measured. We touched a little bit on that in the first objective when we were talking about gross domestic product um, and productivity. So we're just going to dig into that a little bit more so you guys have a better understanding of how we measure the productivity in our country. So let's watch our video. Contrary to what most people think, the gross domestic product or GDP does not tell you how much money your government made during a certain year. Instead, it tells you how much everyone generated that year combined within your country's borders. From employees who sell their time to businesses who sell products or services, all economic participants sell something, and that's what the GDP measures. It basically adds up the value of all final goods and services which have been produced within a country's borders over a certain period of time. The government taxes all of these economic participants, and the money it makes each year isn't the entire GDP, but rather a percentage of the GDP. The money your government makes each year is called government revenue. But since far more people talk about the GDP when assessing how well a country did, it should come as no surprise that the average individual tends to confuse these two terms. What you need to remember is this. Government revenue is what the government makes, whereas the GDP is what everyone within a country's borders makes combined. So. Unless government officials become crazy and increase taxes to 100%, the GDP will always be greater than the government revenue. Let's see if I can stop sharing and then go back and make it go away. There we go. All right. So yeah, just a little intro and what goes into measuring our productivity. So all the products and services that we are producing or selling, iPhones, um, car washes, gas, all that stuff goes into measuring a country's productivity level. All right, so let's jump into objective 102. All right, so understanding the conditions of the economy. So just that, like our bodies are in different conditions. Like right now, I can feel that I'm a little tired. <laughs> Normally I have more energy, but I'm recording this a little later in the day. Um, so yeah, I'm a little, just a little drained. Um, in the mornings, I feel great. I'm a morning bug and, and I, and, um, probably after I'd say seven o'clock, I'm starting to really slow down and get ready for bed. So just like our bodies go through different conditions, so does our economy. Sometimes our economy is thriving, making money, everybody's working, everybody's happy. And then sometimes, you know, our economy is not doing so well. So people are being laid off from work, which is causing them not to make any money. They can't buy anything and they're, they're sad. So our economy is a lot like a roller coaster, kind of like life. So there's ups and downs and turns. And a lot of times there's no predicting what's gonna happen with our economy. So a little refresher, remember GDP is gross domestic product. Just a fancy way of saying how many total products and services a, a country makes a year. That's it. So adding up all of Apple stuff, adding up all of um, Nike stuff, all of um, the sales that sheets, <laughs> um, goodness gracious, Dale, Microsoft, all those companies that offer products and services, Uber, <laughs> that, that are in America. And then those categories that we use to add up that all that productivity are what we're spending as consumers, what businesses are spending, what our government is spending, and then if our exports are over our imports. So if we're selling more things to other countries than we're buying, then that's also added into total productivity. And a few examples at the bottom, um, building houses, paying employees, um, if you're selling final goods, final products. Another look, 
So GDP is calculated by adding consumer spending, business spending, exports, and then government spending. Remember, exports is only counted if we have more exports than we do imports. We've got to show a favorable balance of trade. And I've got a few, few graphs for you. This is a bar chart, um, just kind of showing you guys the productivity of the United States, which is pretty cool. This is with COVID-19 vaccines. And you can see that we are leading from 2020 to 2021, we're leading in COVID vaccine production. That says a lot about our country. It says a lot about our technology, about our intelligence, about our work ethic, about our infrastructure, our roads and our highways, our manufacturing plants. All right, the top economies for 2019 and 2020. We're still leading, you can see here at the top, but as you can tell, we are not growing as fast as China. So they're estimating that China will surpass us in production, probably in your lifetime, maybe in mine as well. So we'll see. That's not good. I don't know about you guys, but I like being number one. I'm an athlete. I'm competitive. I want to be number one. So I want our country to be number one with production as well. I have a lot of kids that say, well, who cares? You should care because that's jobs. That's money. So you can, you know, pay for your rent <laughs> and buy a car. If you're not producing, you're not, you don't have any money. And here's projected GDP. China's projected to almost double our productivity when you guys are probably in your 50s. So when you're a little bit older than I am right now, they're guesstimating that China will, will be producing more than us. So they're estimating that China will be um, the new global superpower. All right, GDP per capita. Remember that's just pr production based based on your population. So how much each person in a country is making. So last year, our country made 21 trillion 800 billion products and services. Our population last year was 331 million. You divide those two numbers, production by input, which would be our population. And each person roughly made about $63,000 last year, which is amazing. That's pretty good. That most people in our country have, you know, what they need as far as financially. That's awesome. These are the top 10, excuse me, top 15 countries based with production based on their population. Um, all these other countries are pretty small. Luxembourg, Switzerland, Ireland, Norway, Singapore, Denmark, Iceland, Qatar, Netherlands, Sweden, Austria, Finland, Finland, and Germany. All very small countries compared to the United States and Australia. So I think based on our population, since we're really big, I think that's pretty cool. That's like if you have 10 children and all your children are very successful. That's pretty cool because normally that doesn't happen. All right, another way that we measure our productivity is by who's working, our labor. And we measure that by looking at unemployment. Unemployment is just people like 18 through 60 that are willing and they can work. The unemployment rate for the United States right now is 6.3%. And then for Nash County is 7.2%. So out of 100 people, there's only six that are willing and able that are out of work in our country. In Nash County, that's seven out of 100 people that are out of work. And you know, with this COVID crisis, I think that's pretty doggone great that almost everybody has a job. And you guys know what it means to be productive, just to, just to create stuff, to be innovative, come up with new ideas, to make burgers and fries and to make this cell phone, to make this laptop, to drive an Uber, Uber Eats, to work at a restaurant, to teach you guys. 
And then some things that we can do to increase our productivity, better technology, better improved equipment, additional training, and good leadership. Uh, just so you guys can see, compared to the other states in our country, um, this was June of last year. You guys can see with North Carolina, we're in this range between six and eight percent. And I think that's pretty good. And the yellow, that's only a few countries. So it looks like we're doing we're doing fairly well compared to the other states. Uh, this is global unemployment. This is based on 2019, so it's a little old, but it still drives home what we're talking about. So in the United States, two years ago, our unemployment rate was under 4%, and you can see some of the countries in Asia, China, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, under 4%. And then as you go to the green, between four and five percent. Yeah. So folks in the United States, we're working. We're working, folks. All right, another way that we measure um, productivity is by what we spend. So our personal income, that includes whatever money we're making from our jobs. That could be a wage or salary. And I did this example for our class today. A wage is based by the hour. And a salary, hours don't matter. So if a nurse is making $36 an hour, let's say she works 36 hours a week. We'll be able to tell how much she makes every week. So that roughly was $1,300 a week. Now, if that nurse picks up an additional shift, so let's say for that additional shift, they'll pay her um, time and a half. So that'll be $52 an hour <laughs> times 12. Which is 624. So for that week, she would add the 624 plus her already full-time hours. So 1300, which is almost $2,000. And that's in one week. So that was what, 19 something, 24. That's per week times four. So she's making, or he's making, roughly $8,000 a month. That's good money. I'm a teacher. This was over here for the wage side. I'm a teacher. This is a nurse. Nurses have two-year degrees, a lot of them. You can be a registered RN, two-year degree. Teacher, four-year degree, so more college. In a year, I'm making about $42,000. That doesn't change regardless of how many hours I work. The only way that that changes is with more experience. So like, let's say that I work five more years as a teacher, that might go up to 45,000. So that will always stay the same. And then a nurse makes $72,000 a year. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, depending on the hours she works. Pretty crazy. Also, um, our investments. So if you've invested money in the stock market, maybe in an IRA, like a retirement account, if you've bought some bonds 
all those things count with your personal income. Um, also, if you are on disability or you're receiving a social security check, that's counted because that's money that you're spending. Um, disability, of course, is if you're unable to physically work, maybe mentally too, you can be mentally, um, mentally disabled. Um, and then after a certain age, like my mom, she's 67. She's been on social security for a few years. So she worked as a teacher for 30 years and now she is retired. Um, and her monthly income is her retirement check and her social security check. She's, she's living life. And then we've got our retail sales. So what we're spending, what are we buying? And the last thing we covered today um, was investments. So this one was what we're spending and this is what we're investing. So our personal savings account. So our cash that's in the bank, that does not just sit there. Yes, it earns interest, but other people are allowed to borrow that money. So my $30,000 that I have in my money market account, people can borrow that. So let's say you've got person A, they want to borrow 10,000. Person B, they want to borrow 10,000. Person C, they want to borrow 10,000. And what happens is the bank will charge each person interest. And that's what's used to pay me for keeping my money in the bank. So it's just not sitting there. <laughs> also the stock market will have an activity to do um, later on this week into next week on investing. So you can invest, you know, in the stock market, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Google, Bing, Apple. That's what that picture is over here. This is Alphabet, which is Google. Bond market, you can invest in like, um, like a, a school, like a university. Let's say if um, A&T is building a new facility, they will open up bonds to allow the general public to help them to build that facility. So with my $30,000, I could take and say, yeah, you know, I, I'd like to buy a bond to help A&T build one of their new facilities. A certain amount of time passes, A&T starts making money on that investment and then they pay me back. So bonds are just a little bit more secure way of investing your money. You can invest in the city of Rocky Mount. You can invest with our state government, the federal government, like with a U.S. savings bonds. So there's different ways that you can invest your money. It does not just have to be with a stock market. And then two ways our savings account impact the economy. Of course, we earn interest. We spend that interest. And then also people borrow the money that we're saving. And that's what we covered today. Make sure you go into Canvas and complete your test. That is due, let me get there. That's due Wednesday. So make sure you go into Canvas, click this button, take your test. You've got 90 minutes to complete it. Make sure you set yourself some time. Complete your exit ticket and I'll see you guys tomorrow.